show is even further off the beaten track than usual. This is Mexico City, home of Corona beer, chicken enchiladas, guacamole, 20 million people and masked wrestling movies. Against all odds and with only a few words of Spanish, such as Donde Este Lavabo, I've travelled here to bring you the truly incredible story of one of Mexico's greatest heroes. The man in the silver mask they called El Santo. How can I thank you? You saved us from death. In my opinion, you're an amazing man. I only do what I can to wipe out injustice and crime. things become folklore in Mexico, but El Santo is one of those things. He conquered not only the, uh, the world of movies, but he conquered the world of, of professional wrestling. This is an actual true-to-life hero. Jonathan, as far as I'm concerned, I don't really call this Mexico City, I call this Santo City. El Santo was the undisputed champion of Mexican superheroes. For over 40 years, he totally dominated the wrestling scene, initially as a live performer, and then subsequently as a film star. So great was his popularity with the Mexican people that when he died in 1984, hundreds of thousands crowded the street as his funeral procession made its way to its final destination here in a suburb of the city. He starred in over 150 films, which serve as a permanent reminder of both his personality and his wrestling skills. El Santo to his adoring Mexican fans, but Samson was the name he went under in America after an enterprising distributor acquired the rights to 27 wrestling classics, which he then badly dubbed into English and sold to American television in the mid-1960s. Among them, the hugely popular Samson vs. the Vampire Women, which still excites die-hard fans like Johnny Legend even today. The movies started penetrating the United States in the late 60s. They were basically staples of late night TV. They would come on sometimes around 11 o'clock midnight and they would run all night. Mexican wrestling horror films around three in the morning on a Friday night. Couldn't believe my eyes. I'd, I hadn't really known it existed. Uh, if I'd ever heard about it, maybe I thought I dreamt it or made it up. The next morning, I wasn't sure I'd really even seen it. And over the years, I just started watching for them and digging up whatever information I could. And uh, I was just mesmerized, basically like anybody else, when they first encountered these things. You know, just astounding. Here they affirm that according to the apocalypse, we're living at a time when things are perfect for the resurrection of monsters here on Earth. Since men are bent on wrecking destruction upon the world today, they'll heed their selfish desires and use the tremendous power that nature has given us. 
Yes, nuclear energy. But there's something worse than what I mentioned just now. I spoke to you about that strange and extraordinary lad who saved Rebecca's life. The documents say that he also would have a descendant, an outstanding young man of enormous strength, destined to hide his identity under a silver-colored mask. That extraordinary young man is obviously you. It's a curiosity, for the fact being the, the way Mexican people are. I shouldn't say just Mexican people, a lot of the Latin people are this way. They're very superstitious. They like to grab a character and make it into an exploitation of uh, a, a hero. And they really believe in it and get their soul behind it. And I believe this is why it is. It's a, it's a phenomenon. It's a phenomenon. A people looking for an identity. An identity of good, not of evil. And that's what El Santo represented. And a lot of your characters in, in, um, under the mask are that way. Today, the legend of El Santo lives on not only through his movies, but also his son, who faithfully reproduces all the fighting skills and excitement of his father. And like the original El Santo, his true identity remains a secret. I wanted to be called El Hico del Santo so that the name and reputation of my father would be kept alive. El Santo is a legend in our world of wrestling. But now, as time passes, many people are forgetting that I'm his son and they simply call me El Santo. And that's truly rewarding to be seen as he was. Of course, for many of the younger children in Mexico, they watch the old films on television and they think that it's me who's in them. Often when I arrive at a wrestling arena, a young lad will say, I saw you on television last night fighting those mummies. And that makes me feel really good. Now, myself and my father are seen as one. or something like that at the end of the play the actors all come out and bow over here they don't come out and bow this is very serious it's it's not just on a silver screen this is like a flesh and blood reality whether it's comic books films or in the ring they really follow it through all the way it's like to the death you might say the incredibly strange film show will continue on tdc tv turn to the incredibly strange film show on tdc tv Perhaps what I should make clear is that a masked wrestler never takes off his mask. His entire life outside of his home is spent with his mask on. So whether he's going shopping with his wife or attending a dinner party, he does so with his mask firmly in place. Supposedly, a wrestler's identity is never known. And I think you have to admire someone who follows things through to the very end. This is the Mausoleos del Angel, where El Santo is laid to rest. And as you can see, even in death, he wears his mask. I think he had his mask more on than off. Uh, to prove it, his ears were, were like clipped back to his head. So as he's wearing the mask so much that his, uh, you know, you could see that the, the, it took its, its toll. His ears were back and certain features of his face were very tender. And I remember what I remember of the man. He, I remember his face very little. I remember the mask a lot, though. Why was it important then to keep wearing the mask? What was he trying to achieve? Well, it was the identity of it all. It's, uh, it's a secret. I'm finding out who it is. All the evil they can muster is against you in this thing. And so you might be killed attempting to save my daughter. Nevertheless, I have to continue. I have to go on the way my ancestors did to eliminate evil of all kinds. And human vampires are monsters that can never expose themselves to direct daylight. Surely they use a hideout of some kind as a refuge. And there possibly we could surprise and destroy them. Of course, the idea of a Mexican Cape Crusader has a very current parallel with Batman in the United States. And the comparisons don't just end with the mask and the cape. 
While El Santa preferred a rather more modest two-seater sports car to a Batmobile, he also had an underground cave filled with scientific equipment and a unique arrangement with the local police commissioner. Like Batman, El Santa was always ready to take on the baddies whenever the call came. This is Professor Roloff. Come in. Can you hear? It's very important, Samson. Emergency. Please answer. I'm listening, Professor Roloff. This is Samson answering. Come in, Professor. Over. Listen, Samson. The crypt where you'll find the vampires hiding is located in the forest of White Pine. So please hurry. I think we may save Diana. In a second, we'll be on our way there. And I wish you good luck. This is typical of many of El Santo's cinematic adventures in the early 1960s. In his nifty two-seater British sports car, El Santo cuts a dashing figure in his constant battle against evil. Here, he pits himself against a bunch of sturdy but seriously disfigured vampire women who drink fresh human blood in an attempt to restore their looks. The lead vampire was played by one of Mexico's biggest stars, Lorena Velasquez. What was he like to work with? Well, he represented the, the justice. Here it is. He was the Mexican Schwarzenegger. And he was a very nice man. Very kind man. Very uh, a good actor. Well, the truth, not very good, but <laughs> he represented the justice. And this is very, very important for the people because uh, everybody in this uh, world we want to have justice. So if you can find somebody who rep uh, represents that, it's beautiful, no? Did you ever see him without his mask? Yes, just one. When uh, she, uh, we were uh, making a film, then he said, Lorena, don't you want to meet me? And I said, well, okay. And uh, he takes uh, the mascara and he said, eh, what do you think? And I said, put it on. Uh, no, no. <laughs> no, I said, well, he looks well. In our country, we don't have the cowboy, we don't have the superhero. We have uh, wrestlers as the, the main heroes. In that sense, they are admired more than their usual field of activity. They become uh, legends. God bless Samson. Who is he, Papa? That's his secret. I don't think you'll ever know. But I'll say this, my dear. In this age where there are certain evil men who propose to destroy us, Samson is an example to men of goodwill who serve justice. El Santo was only one of several leading wrestlers tried out in the early days of these films, but he soon became the most popular. His adoring fans would cheer excitedly in the packed cinemas as he triumphed over every conceivable form of evil. As the series progressed, his foes had to be constantly updated and the imagination of his producers knew no bounds. Martians, mummies, zombies, apes, spies, and even such mythical nasties as Dracula and Frankenstein were pitted against the man in the silver mask and cape. In this example, El Santo confronts not just the Mexican Christopher Lee, but also a casually attired werewolf. second part of the 50s and the first part of the 60s are the years where uh, wrestling movies uh, were done. And they were done by the hundreds. Um, just El Santo did about 50 movies himself. So you can imagine with the popularity of all the other wrestlers like Blue Demon 
and uh, the mad doctor and all this there were hundreds of movies la furia de los karatecas me voy a vengar de él para siempre hostel del bien sus hechizos no tienen límite las más extrañas aventuras del santo jamás filmadas se crean monstruos terribles santo el enmascarado de plata I would say, uh, in, in a lot of cases, uh, similar to low-budget American film production, it's like you got a wrestling arena, you've got a couple cars, uh, you've got about five or six monsters, and you got some kids that can sing their hearts out. Uh, let's put it all together, and whatever shows up on the day of shooting goes into the film. If it doesn't show up, then it makes it into the next film. Santo interfirió con mis planes, y debe ser castigado. Y el castigo será la muerte. Qué gusto. Santo contra el asesino de la televisión. Una peligrosa aventura del santo en la que tiene que luchar por salvar su vida contra el enemigo más diabólico, el asesino de la televisión. By the early 1960s, the El Santo films were guaranteed box office, and bit by bit their budgets were increased. The formula, however, was never tampered with. Apart from the essential triumph of good over evil, there were always some lengthy wrestling scenes and at least one musical interlude. And these are some of my favorites. Una canción de amor Caminando por la playa estoy Recordando nuestro ayer I don't think there were many filmmakers in the U.S. adding musical numbers to horror films. They just started doing it here. It was just a natural thing. They were already doing hodgepodges here where you just throw in a little bit of everything. So if somebody went to the movies, let's say, on a Saturday or Sunday afternoon here, they wouldn't have to pick what kind of movie they would go see because they could just go see any movie and would have everything in it. Hoy me estás ahorcando. Hoy te quedaron a tan fuerte. Hoy sí me doy, me doy, me doy, me doy, me doy. Blue. Hola, Julito. ¿Qué tal te fue de viaje? Hola, campeón. Way back in the 50s and 60s, the golden age of masked wrestling, the Blue Demon was almost as popular as El Santo. They appeared together in a number of films and were also close friends off screen. Now in his late 60s, he runs this wrestling training school, but you can't keep a legend down. And much to the delight of his many fans, he still occasionally appears in the ring. Today, the Blue Demon's attendance is mainly to help out his son, who also went into the family business. Although Blue Demon was teamed up with El Santo in many films, the professional rivalry that existed between them is as strong as ever. I uh, had the opportunity to meet El Santo in several individual contests when we were matched against each other. This was a chance to demonstrate my superiority. Now, I don't know what seemed to be boasting, but uh, the facts speak for themselves. And I beat him on two consecutive occasions. One day, I discovered that my father was jealous that El Santo had a son who was carrying on his name in the ring. So I said, well, why don't we see if I can become Blue Demon Jr.? And that's really how it all started. My friends also encouraged me, but it was mainly the continuing rivalry that's always existed between El Santo and the Blue Demon. 
y más que nada el celo profesional que existió entre el santo, mi padre descanse, y mi padre Blumen. But whatever rivalries may have existed in real life, in the movies they were always allies, an unstoppable team opposed to wrongdoers everywhere. Llamando a Santo. Aquí Santo. Santo, ¿me escuchas bien? Santo, ¿me escuchas bien? Sí. No los he perdido de vista. Estoy en la carretera. If you want to see, uh, let's say, in England or America, you want to see James Bond or Indiana Jones, and you come out of the theater and you go home, and there's Sean Connery and Harrison Ford. Whereas in Mexico, you go to see the movies, and it's Santo Mil Mascaras, Blue Demon. And when you leave the theater, when they leave the movie, they 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 remain Blue Demon and Santo and Mil Mascaras uh, all through life, everywhere they go. It's it's uh, they're not kidding around. <laughs> The incredibly strange film show will continue on TDC TV. We now return to the incredibly strange film show on TDC TV. Mexico's best-known tourist spots provide the settings for El Santo movies, and the mummies of Guanajuato is a fine example. The town of Guanajuato boasts a network of underground caverns containing hundreds of mummified corpses. In the film, the dead return to life and terrorize the local population, who quite naturally call in the help of a couple of masked Mexican wrestlers, the Blue Demon and El Mil Mascaras, the man of a thousand masks. Ay, yes. But even their combined might isn't enough, so it's up to our hero, El Santo, to save the day. For whatever reason, be it the monsters, the location, or the casting of the three biggest wrestlers in Mexico, The Mummies of Guanajuato is still considered the most popular film of its type ever made. And it's the ending that everyone remembers. So scene after scene goes by, and the Blue Demon and Mil Mascaras can't finish the mummies off. So just before the very end of the film, El Santo arrives, and he realizes the mummies have to be burnt. So that's what he does, and he's the hero of the film. And that's how people remember him. He was the only one who could deal with the mummies of Guanajuato.
Even today, 20 years after the film was made, the Blue Demon resents the fact that it was El Santo who saved the day. Pues en realidad, eh, el que... Well, the reality of the film is that myself and Mil Mascaras did all the work in fighting the mummies of Guanajuato. Muy buena. Por cierto, las momias de Guanajuato existen. We were there from the start and what we did was good. So, what I don't like about the film is that El Santo had a very small part, yet he was the hero. He just uh, doesn't seem right to me. He just turned up at the last minute and then he pocketed all the glory that we'd earned. Of course, wrestling movies weren't just the domain of El Santo. It was one of his regular directors, Rene Cardona, who launched the hugely popular wrestling women series in the early 1960s with the film Las Luchadoras contra... El Medico Asesino. Thank you. Contra El Medico Asesino. Lorena Velasquez and Elizabeth Campbell played the wrestlers, pitted against a loony brain surgeon, intent on creating a new type of creature by mixing the essential organs of humans and animals. The mad duck, come on! is going to blow up very soon. There's nothing we can do for this man. I guess this is the end of the mad doctor then. You know, it's a shame we couldn't find out his real identity, but he's paid for all his crimes now. Can you remember the titles of the Los Luchadores series that you made? Well, no, because I'm an old woman. Well, but anyway, I'm going to make an effort. And um, it was the titles Las Luchadoras Contra la Momia, Las Luchadoras Contra el Medico Asesino, and, um, and what else? Well, I don't remember. Did you do the wrestling yourself or did you have a double? Mm, no, I have a double and my, my double was a fatty woman, so I hate her. But uh, anyway, I was uh, just there in the close-ups. No, no, no! The wrestling women basically would get caught up with uh, some sort of uh, evil nemesis, uh, you know, like some kind of costumed evil Fu Manchu type of character. Uh, like the one in uh, Wrestling Women vs. the Aztec Mummy, who would eventually take them to the pyramids, where they would finally have a very extreme confrontation with the Aztec Mummy. Look, he's afraid of fire. Mummy again. Mama, 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 la momia. Mama, 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 la momia. Azteca si es el amigo de muerto. Amigo de muerto. Psychedelica, psychedelica, psychedelica. Everybody. Mom, la momia. Mom, la momia. Mom, la momia. Ah. The wrestling audience isn't limited to the poorer sections of the Mexican people. 
It draws enthusiasts from all quarters, women as well as men, and the passions generated at the ringside can be extremely fierce. In fact, Mexican television will no longer show it because it considers the spectacle to be too rowdy and wild. It's also a fix, something which, not surprisingly, no one connected with the sport will actually admit. But the winner has been decided in a private arrangement long before the start. To the audience, who wins or who loses doesn't really seem to matter. Wrestling here is less a competitive sport, more a performing art. And the really good wrestlers are the best actors. could be described as a connoisseur of world wrestling. What is it about live wrestling events in Mexico that, that makes them seem so much more exciting than elsewhere? Um, it's a style of wrestling you find over here that is just different than anywhere else in the world. Um, over here, they've been doing this extreme kind of athletic, uh, very wiry, uh, lots of flying activity in the ring. People here have just gotten used to so much action, so much commotion in the ring. They're just used to such a faster pace of wrestling. And that's why I like wrestling over here, because it's different than anywhere else in the world. Judging from the crowds here tonight, mass wrestling as a live event has lost none of its popularity. And although the films aren't being made anymore, wrestling fans can satisfy their needs with all sorts of spin-off merchandising. If you look here, you can see you can buy masks like the ones they wear, and these are incredibly well made. I'm certainly going to take some of these home for my mum. You can get plastic figures of the wrestlers. There's El Santo. El Santo? Yeah. Uh, the Blue Demon. You can get all the characters who wrestle here very cheaply. You can buy wrestling magazines, posters, and even comic books. And once again, it was El Santo who proved to be the most popular character. At its peak, his comic book was selling over one million copies a month. Today, El Hijo del Santo is the biggest attraction on the wrestling circuit. And of course, the myth of the mask remains central to the enjoyment of the live match. Y el público a ti te ve. You see, the public have an image of me as a kind of superman, a legend, an idol, something that's not human. In fact, sometimes people really see me as a kind of god. Frequently, El Hijo del Santo faces an opponent who is determined to rip his mask off and reveal his identity. If the masked man loses, then his mask is taken off, his identity is revealed, and it's pretty much like being raped. It's pretty much like being exposed. It's something that gets your honor really low. That's pretty bad. Like his father before him, El Hijo del Santo has fought many tense matches, which have almost ended in disaster. Well, there are occasional big money contests where I'm putting my mask at stake against a really tough opponent. And whenever I've had one of these fights, I've had to think very hard about the outcome. And I know that if I lost and I was unmasked, I'd have to retire. The mystery would have gone. In the case of many of El Santo's cinematic opponents, it might have been better if the mask had stayed on. People in Mexico get something that is more of a way of life because over here the comic books, 
the movies, the wrestling, all intermingle, and uh, they, they just go back and forth. You can, you can go see the movies, and then you can come home and go out to the wrestling matches and actually see the same characters. They don't go away. There are many theories as to why these films are no longer made. Some cite declining audiences, others blame it on corruption in the film industry. But before they died out completely, El Hijo del Santo had a shot of the movies himself in one of the last of the wrestling films. Una película llena de ternura con la alegría inigualable de los cómicos norteños. Needless to say, the formula hadn't changed. Masks, action, and of course, a very odd song. El hijo del santo en frontera sin ley. I actually am down here scouting locations for Emmanuel meets the Aztec Mummy, which I'm planning to shoot here later this year in 3D, all over the world, but particularly here, the place where Santo, Blue Demon, Mil Mascaris, the wrestling women have all done their best work here, and I plan to bring the Aztec Mummy back after 20 years and put him back to work here in the streets where he was born and where he belongs. of Mexican wrestling films are over, despite the aspirations of such enthusiasts as Johnny Legend. But don't throw away your mask just yet, because it seems that Mexican television are just about to start filming a new series starring El Hijo del Santo, with the formula much the same as that which launched his father to stardom. The legend of El Santo lives on. we made a lot of films las luchadoras contra la momia for example no here the aztecs uh, well they have a meetings so okay, uh, Lorena, hello after more hello. than 20 years i would like ah! oh, at least oh, i recognize you my friend so i'm so happy to see the reunion of the century your leading man but he's bald and if he made to bed. The star of wrestling woman meeting her greatest leading man, the original Aztec mummy. <laughs> 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 